you guys want to move the headlight switch from the floor up to the dash so you can give yourself a solid footrest, stick around and I'll show you how to do it. What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I want to get rid of the foot activated high beam switch and move it onto the dash because I want to have a foot rest down there. I'm used to having, you know, on my previous manual cars, there's always a foot rest or even on automatics, there's always a foot rest down there. And I'm used to putting my foot over there and I'm finding myself constantly bumping that switch and I don't really like doing that. You know, I, I'll rest it up against the switch or I'll put it here, but it's not really where I want and really I want my foot right here and I want to be able to push against it to kind of brace myself as I'm maybe taking some of the corners a little higher speed than I should. But anyways, so I want to get this out of the way and I'm thinking about putting it on the dash maybe right here uh, using a switch. And what I have is just a basic toggle switch that's designed to be, you know, one position or the other. Uh, there's no middle position. So in this case, you know, if it was sitting like this, you know, you'd have low beam and then I could flip it up and then it would be high beam. And uh, to, to just kind of recreate what we've got, you know, down here with that switch. Um, you know, the, the terminals on the back here are designed to be, you know, the same thing where you've got that kind of that common wire in the middle and then you can have low beam and high beam and really it should just, you know, replicate what we're doing down there. And when I want to put this on the switch, or put the switch on the dash, you know, I'm going to have to drill a hole. I, I really kind of went through and figured out how else I could do this. I looked at different types of switches, you know, maybe putting something, you know, over here where the radio goes. Um, but I really didn't want to do anything with that. I really don't want to drill any holes in my dash, but I don't know of any other way to do this. And I'm kind of already committed to going on this route. So with this switch, I'm also going to have a label set up like this. Um, and I, I made a couple of these. Um, one of them here says, you know, headlight, you know, low and high. So I know if low beam, high beam. And then I just have just a, you know, low and high uh, cover here or whatever. This is designed to fit over that type of toggle switch. You can, you can get these ordered online and they can be whatever you want them to say. And if we put them, you know, here on the dash, it would be something like this. Now it's kind of out of the way. It's got adhesive on the back. And we'll just put up something like that. Uh, it won't hit the, uh, the window crank and it's out of the way. It's not in your face. And if, you know, if I ever change my mind, if, you know, having a hole right here is way better than having a hole somewhere else on the dash. So this is what I'm going to go with. Now I'm hoping that when I get in there, get behind the dash, that there's nothing in the way. So if there is, I may have to do a different position, but for now, I think this is where I'm going to put it. So what I want to do is I want to start taking apart the car. I got to take the seat out. I'm gonna take this, this sill out and then this kick panel so I can get to all the wiring. Um, and what am I gonna put in that spot right there? I'm gonna put something like this. This is just a, a footrest. I got this, this is actually out of an Acura Integra. I just got it off eBay for a couple of bucks. And uh, I gotta trim it down a little bit so it, it'll sit flush you know, on the floor. But I'm just gonna basically bolt that to the floor just like that. And right kind of right where that's sitting, that switch is sitting, and that should give me a place to put my foot when I'm driving. So let's get everything taken apart and uh, dig into it. So looking at the wiring that I have here, huh, I don't think this is the way this is supposed to go. I could be wrong. I thought it came down behind the, the kick panel here and it didn't. So um, maybe I didn't need to remove that. I don't know. So now what I'm going to do is take the screws out of here and then we can, you know, take a look at this. Now this setup here, what's interesting about this plug is that it looks very similar to the toggle switch that I'm going to be putting in here. Oh no, doesn't quite fit. Gosh darn it. Now there may be a, a switch out there you could buy that's got this, this, you know, the distance of these is closer than that and you could just reuse the plug and that would be ideal. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to, I'm just going to cut this wire harness maybe somewhere back here. So if I ever decided or whatever happened, I wanted to go back to this setup, 
you know, I don't, I don't destroy this and I could just splice these wires back in and put it back down there, but um, oh well. I was wondering if we were gonna get there, but I guess not. So I'm gonna get that out of the way and then we can start looking at the foot pedal piece we're gonna put in there. So here's the piece that I wanna put in here and you know, I don't, I'm gonna have to trim that side of that off and trim those little pegs off, but I wanna utilize these mount holes so I'm gonna have to cut this off flush with that so it'll all line up. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it right around in this area. And I don't wanna be too close to the kick panel because I, don't, I wanna be able to take that kick panel in and out. Um, but I don't want it too far over this way because then I can't put my foot there with the pedal. In the so I'm thinking somewhere in this area, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this modified first. Then we'll do a test fit. And just like that, it's all cut off. So what I did, I just used this uh, jigsaw but you guys could use like a razor blade or something if you don't have that and um, just you know the, the, the cut isn't the cleanest but really it's going to be buried in the floor and you'll never see it. So also notice there's kind of a wedge shape. It's skinnier down here than it is up there so you want it so that the fatter edge is up on top because it tilts your foot you know away from the firewall. So I'm going to put it somewhere right in here and I probably should figure out where I want it first before I start drilling holes. So if we put the carpet back, I think what I want to do is cover up this. I don't want to take this out. I don't want to, I mean, I guess I could just take it out of the, of the carpet. That's probably going to be fine. So that's not going to hurt anything. But the hole's still there and I want to cover the hole, obviously, so it doesn't look so bad. Kind of get an idea of where I want this to go. Okay, so I moved this around a little bit. I, you know, kind of sat in here, figured out where I want. What I found out is that I want to be able to rest my heel down here and I want the ball of my foot to be in the top third so that it's, you know, that my toes aren't, you know, if I put the ball of my foot up here, my toes are kind of, can kind of push over the top. I don't want that. I want to be able to push with my toes, push with the ball of my foot, but still have some support in the middle of my foot. I mean, this is not a very big foot rest and you guys might be able to find a bigger one, but this will work for what I want to do. And this is about where I want it. And it covers that hole in the carpet. So what I want to do here is I want to mark where I'm going to drill the holes. I've got a paint pan that I could use to mark the carpet then give me an idea of where stuff's gonna go there and right up here. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be good enough. So when we take this out of the way, you can see there's a yellow paint there, a little bit of yellow paint right there. And we can just kind of recreate it and make it a little bit more defined. So that's where I want my holes to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the carpet so I can put a, a drill bit through here and drill into the sheet metal. And I, probably up here, I could probably get away with not doing anything because the hole is right there. I could probably just, you know, drill the sheet metal and I'd be good there. But let's get that cut. I'm just gonna cut through the carpet here. This is pretty thick stuff. All right, so now we got kind of a hole through the insulation. So when we put the drill bit through here, it doesn't catch up all this insulation and spin it up onto the drill bit. And for the, the, the screws, I'm just gonna use these, these real coarse thread screws because it'll bite the sheet metal and hold it in place. I'm not looking for something that's structurally sound. It just needs to just hold this pedal you know, down, to the, down to the floor. So we put that in there and then uh, that'll be fine. Put one on each end and that ought to do it. So for the drill bit, I'm gonna use just a 3 16 drill bit because that should be enough to drill a hole for the shank of that, that fastener. So now I wanna drill a hole into the sheet metal so I can get ready to install this. <laughs> and I still spun up the insulation. Ah. Oh well, at least I made a mark on the sheet metal so I know where to where I can drill. Well, there's one bit. Let's try this again. And that'll work for now. 
Um, it's not, I might have to go back and put some bolts in there just to get it more secure, but it, uh, we'll try it out. We'll see how it works. So now we need to move over to the wiring here. What I'm going to do is I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to cut this off and I'll just feed this up through and, uh, up into the dash up, up top there. You know, and for the purpose of what we're doing here, I just need to mark the, the middle wire because it really doesn't matter which wire these other two are because I can flip the switch over on the, on the dash to figure out where I want things to go. So we'll just uh, go ahead and cut this one. And then I'm just gonna mark this wire with a piece of tape, just so I know that this is the, this is the center wire. So I was feeling around behind the dash and I think I've got a, I think I'd be able to, to drill this hole and I'm going to try to fish this up through the back and I think we'll be able to do this without taking the, the, the instrument cluster out. So I think I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this guy right in here. So let's mark that and right there. So I want that, that hole to be right there. All right, guys, this is uh, no going back from here. So, uh, if you don't want to do this, uh, maybe find a different way to mount the switch. And we're trying to go to a half inch hole, and I think this uh, this will do a half inch. I'm gonna get a different bit, so I don't have to drill so far so deep into the dash. All right, half inch hole. Yeah. So what I want to do now is I'm gonna fix the the put the little spade connectors on here so I can connect this up and then we'll feed it in from the back. Now those are on there. What probably is a good time to do what we should do is we should test the switch and just put everything on here and put the car back in. And before we finish installing, make sure that everything works here. <laughs> All right. I don't want to shock myself. Uh, so let's see, let's turn the lights on. All right. The lights are on in the garage door. I can see that. If I flip this, that's high beams. Low beams, that's awesome. Low beams, high beams, low beams, high beams, fantastic. All right, so now I know that I can mount this in the dash, but I'm gonna probably gonna mark on here, I'll just turn these off, mark on here what, what side's the high and the low, just so I know, and then I'm gonna feed it up in the dash, and then we can also mount this little guy. Remember, it's just it's double-sided tape thing or whatever on here, and we'll just stick it on there, and then we'll use the included uh, nut that came with it to secure it to the dash. There, I just put an L for low and an H for high. So I want to actually install it on the dash with the high up to go with this. So um, the, the natural position will just be down for the low beams. And I also just went ahead and put some electrical tape on here just to protect those terminals from anything. When I put them on the dash, just make sure nothing arcs up there. So, all right, we're in the low position. So let's feed it up there. And this is where it's going to get tricky because, oh, maybe not. That's in there, and that's where we want it. Now we can stick this on there. There's a lock washer and a nut that comes with this little switch. Awesome. Okay, turn the lights on. High, low, high, low, perfect. This is it, this is what I want. I'm just gonna get a wrench real quick and tighten that down. You need to be careful when you're tightening this down. There's a little, on this one, I've got this little slot here in the threads. I wanna make sure I keep this upright while I tighten this down. There we go. That's stuck on there. Now let's put the seat back in. All right, let's see how this thing fits. This is fantastic. This is a good spot, um, you know, kind of looking from the driver's seat. You know, it looks fairly stock, right? It looks like something that might've come with this car. It doesn't stand out. It's not moving, it's pretty firm. I still might wanna swap those bolts out for something a little more secure, but I think we're good. And then with the lights, so highs, lows, highs, lows, fantastic. I think this looks pretty good. And I'm happy with how that turned out. I think we're in a good spot, guys. So again, this is something that if you guys don't mind drilling a hole in your dash, you're gonna be, this might be an alternative for you if you wanna get rid of that push button down there and give yourself a foot rest. Um, I like it, it came out a lot better than I thought it was going to, so that's good. All right guys, that's it. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.